All-American at North Carolina, kid of the ACC. I know you have a feeling for this rivalry. Well, I tell you, there's no more intense rivalry anywhere in the country. The atmosphere is electric. They were playing celebration a little while ago. I'm not sure it's a celebration. It could be a ritual. And Clemson comes in here, the highest ranking in the school's history in the national polls, number two. Well, they've got a great ball club. They've played consistently well. They've got an offensive juggernaut that's really rolling. 400 yards in the last six ball games of total offense. They're on the move. Well, Ken, the thing that's made that offense go, especially over the last half of the season, is a potent aerial attack that suddenly has developed here for the Clemson, one that's seen Jerry Butler's records go down the drain. Well, of course, the key to this is Homer Jordan, the young quarterback. Uh, he runs well. He, he started out running all the time. Now he's throwing and throwing very well. He's 240 yards to break uh, Steve Fuller's uh, one season total offense record. And of course, his number one receiver is Perry Tuttle, who's, uh, who's caught 44 balls and uh, is a great receiver. And I think you'll agree with me, though, the heart and soul of this Clemson team is its defense ranked in three national categories, and they're led by great linebackers. Well, when you talk about defense for Clemson, you're talking about Jeff Davis. 146 tackles already, made 16 last week. You can look for him anywhere around the ball. South Carolina, of course, last year had the Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers. He's no longer around, but still, they like that style of attack running their tail by Johnny Wright, who's a veteran. Johnny Wright, 700 yards already. He played in the shadow of George Rogers, of course. Uh, they can't get the ball to him enough. He's they, a great ball player. They do need a big game from him. Defensively, South Carolina's crippled. They've lost three starters. They do have an outstanding tackle, though, in Province. Well, Anthony Province, what can you say? 6'3", 260, uh, a super ball player. Wherever the ball is, look for An Andrew Province, because he will be there. This will be the 79th meeting of the Gamecocks and the Tigers. But up until about 20 years ago, Ken, this was known as Big Thursday here in Columbia. Well, this used to be played part of the uh, State Fair here in uh, Columbia, and uh, it's a whole other season. It certainly is for both teams, and often as not, the underdog will come on and pull off the upset. And so Danny Ford, who has a national championship within his sights, has to run into an arch rival. That got to be a tough spot for Danny. Well, you never want to play a, a, a great rivalry because uh, at the end of the year, with the record 10-0, and 0, and then they've got a lot to gain, and we've got uh, very little games. I won the football game, but uh, it's the end of the year for us, and it's a great rivalry. It's the same situation we had last year where we went and, uh, were just trying to survive and break even and, and uh, have a pretty fair football team, and they were a very good football team. We upset them, and then I'm sure they're going to try to do the same thing for us, and it's, and it's a thing that uh, any time... Two great rivalries play each other. Anything can happen. You can throw out the score books and uh, look at what's going to happen in the game because no telling who's going to win a football game. But a very, very tough football game, and we look forward to playing them, and I'm sure South Carolina looks forward to playing Clemson. Well, a man who's only 33 and played for Bear Bryant didn't take him long to get the fever. Well, it sure didn't. I think uh, Bear and he are doing themselves proud. That's Danny Ford, the coach at Clemson. Head coach of South Carolina is Jim Carlin, who's real built the program here just like he did at West Virginia and Texas Tech. And he, too, realizes this is a special, special game. The wildest one I've ever been even close to. It's a small state, and they're very competitive, and they give a lot of money between the two schools. There's about $5 million in donations to the athletic departments, and they're rabid fans, and it's a good rivalry. It's a testy one. Uh, Sometimes it gets out of hand. I think it goes a little bit too, too far to an extreme, but you want to win this game more than any game you play all year. All right, Ken, a quick prediction. What to expect? Well, I don't have to be brave to pick Clemson. They've got too much on the line. They'll win it. All right, we'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Clemson versus South Carolina, the big game of the Palmetto State. Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. It's the number two ranked Clemson Tigers against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Clemson has won the toss. The Tigers, the surprise team of college football 1981, will receive the Gamecocks of South Carolina will kick off. The last two years, this game has wound up in an upset. Two years ago here, the Tigers came in as a heavy favorite and were beaten by South Carolina. Last year, the game, Cox with Heisman Trophy winner George Rogers went into Death Valley Clemson, and Clemson won that game. So here we are, Ken Willard. The Tigers, the game, Cox have met for so many times, but each year it's the most important ever. I don't think there's ever been a year when there's been more riding on one ball game. 
Kicking off for South Carolina with Mark Fleetwood of South of Atlanta. Deep is Kevin Mack and Perry Tuttle for Clemson. Tuttle is waiting at the one, and here he comes. We're underway in South Carolina. Tuttle at the 20, written down about the 21-yard line, and it'll be first and 10. James Slipter, a linebacker, made the stop for the Gamecocks. A capacity crowd here set. Here are the offensive backs. Jordan with Austin tailback, Mack and fullback, Gay Yard, and Perry Tuttle, a great receiver, is broken up. So there's the offensive line. Nanny, uh, Lee Nanny, number 77, an All-American at right tackle. Running has been the big part of the Clips attack, but they have a potent passing game with, uh, with uh, Jordan going to either Tuttle or Gay Yard. High formation. Two wide receivers to the right. The pitch is back to Austin. The left side turns the corner and dives to about the 25-yard line. Tripped up he was. At about the 12 line of scrimmage by Troy Thomas, a right corner linebacker. And it's a gain of about four or five on the play. Defensively, South Carolina uses a five-man line. Two linebackers and four deep back. There's the defensive line. Johnson Province, who's a great one. Hey, good Fargo and Henderson. Henderson, the great rusher. J.D. Fuller now standing linebacker in C right. And the deep back, Skipper, Boyd, Perlow, and Thomas. Second down, six to go. Maybe seven for Clemson. Up the middle comes Austin. Nothing going. Stop pull. The 25-yard line by Hal Henderson. And Mike Fargo and the South Carolina and the Gamecocks come out fired up for this one, kid. Well, Ricky Haygood is uh, is playing great football right now. They've got to they've got to meet him head on right now. Anthony Promise has got to anchor that line. They've got two young linebackers in James C. Wright and J.D. Fuller. I think the real test of this game, Jim, is going to get down to how well they can play under this type of pressure. Passing situation, third down and seven for Jordan. He's got Tuttle in motion to the left. He's the top receiver. He's going to join Gayard at the right side, top of the screen. It's a handoff instead of Austin. Food for a loss at the 24 by Ricky Haygood. A middle guard again for the Gamecocks. And South Carolina has stopped Clemson's first uh, series almost cold in the tracks. Well, you can see Ricky Haygood on the snap. He stands the center up, fights a block off, and gets in on Austin. When they put that man in motion, when they put uh, Tuttle in motion, they're going to blitz. Here's the punt now. Outstanding soft, uh, freshman punter by Hatcher. And the catch by Troy Thomas. He's hit almost his tracks. But it's great field position for South Carolina at the Gamecocks 48-yard line. Now offensively for South Carolina. Gordon Beckham will be a quarterback. Johnny Wright the tailback. To, to make blazing game. Dominic. And there's Smith and Hillary, Hillary are the wide receivers. And the line, they've had some uh, injuries here, but Chuck Slaughter, probably the best one at right tackle, is celebrating his birthday today. First play of the game for the Gamecocks, Beckham number 14 at quarterback. He likes to give it a right as tail back of the eye. Johnny Wright up the middle, slams into his own player, and is taken down hard. The 49-yard line of Clemson, a gain of about three. Je Jeff Davis. Number 45 and number 99, Jeff Bryant. And on the play for South Carolina, for Clemson. There's their offensive or defensive line. Jeff Bryant, number 99, an All-American candidate at right tackle. And the linebackers, no question about Jeff Davis, a pure All-American, Danny Triplett at the other. And the deep backs, Hall, Rose, Childers, and Kennard. Kennard, the leader, probably, of that second round. Second, about eight from the 49-yard line. South Carolina gets into Clemson with its uh, first play from scrimmage. There goes Clemson jumping off sides and look like the nose guard, William Perry. Well, William Perry is a big freshman. They call him GE, and they say that GE stands because he looks like an icebox. Resembles a refrigerator. He's very, very wide. That's how he's described by his coach. 295 pounds and six foot uh, three, a freshman. He's from Aiken, South Carolina, and you know he's aching to do well here today <laughs> against the game box. Five yard penalty against Clemson. And now South Carolina's got a chance to try something here. Second down and just three to go. Right, the tailback. Again, they bring Corley, the tight end, in motion. Here's the option play. Keep by Beckham, got a first down. Into the 40 yard line of Clemson. Gordon Beckham on the option keep, and he is spun down about the 40 yard line of Clemson by Joe Glenn. It'll be a first down for South Carolina. Ricky Elliott, open the hole for him at left tackle. Gordon Beckham's a fine quarterback. He hasn't thrown as well as they would have liked him to. He's uh, has seven touchdowns, but he's thrown 14 interceptions. They've got to get a good running game out of him. They wanted to go with Dwayne Chivers if he was at all able to play and run that two tight end offense, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Right now they got two wide receivers, Smith and Hillary. 
Now Smith steps up on the line as the tight end goes again in motion. Been using this series and this uh, look, first down play. Again the option. Now the pitch to Wright. Cutting back, turns the corner inside the 35. Johnny Wright on the pitch out of the option. Dominic Blazing game. There we go. Super block at about the 38, and there he went. Well, Dominic Blasting game gets out in front here. They're putting Chris Corley in motion backwards. They're getting a shift on the defense, and they're getting some strong running from Johnny Wright. He just straightened up Hollis Hall, the left corner linebacker. Blasting game did to open up that run for broad Johnny Wright. And here's South Carolina running against the nation's number six defense against the rush. The Clemson Tigers giving up only 87 yards a game. Gamecock second straight first down. Now the Clemson 33. Motion goes Ira Hillary. Here's Beckham faking and rolling. First pass is caught. They're about the 20 yard line. Caught by Horace Smith. Nope. That's Todd Berry. Todd Berry who checked in at fullback made the catch out of the backfield. Another first down and the Gamecocks are on the march. Well, Todd Berry's coming into the ball game in passing situations replacing blasting game snuck through there and got out in the, in the sidelines and uh, Gordon Beckham just picked him out. They're running a lot of crossing uh, crossing moves with the backs and sending their their ends in motion. Right now Smith from the left side here's a handoff uh, to and breaking through goes Haygood. Haygood is inside the 15 inside the 10. Kent Haygood stopped by Anthony Rose and South Carolina has the first threat mounted in this game against the nation's second ranked team. Well I tell you they've got it going. Everybody knew this could happen if South Carolina gets it going early. Ricky Elliott made a great block on that play to spring Haygood. Haygood has been running behind Wright, but uh, I tell you, he looked good. He's a freshman only. Now Wright's back in the game. So is Dominic Blazing game. Jim Carlin's going to go with his strongest rushing attack here. First and goal at the Clemson nine-yard line. They told you how the underdog always plays in this game. Here's South Carolina very early. No score in the first period. The pitch is to Wright. Cutting back to the five. And he's to the two. Johnny Wright. Finally stopped by Bill Smith, the lieutenant of Clemson. Almost broke it for the score. And now South Carolina knocking right at the two-yard line of Clemson. South Carolina, there's Johnny Wright digging in, taking him with him. They're running an unbalanced line, really. They're bringing one of the tight ends, putting him in motion. That creates an unbalanced situation, and they're pitching to go with that. Todd Berry again replaces Dominic Blasting game at fullback. It is second and goal. South Carolina at the Clemson two-yard line. They go to the power eye formation. Blazing game is running out of the tailback. Nope, they got uh, right back there. And they give it a right. Left side. And he is to the goal line. Not quite over. Johnny Wright behind Blazing game on a straight power handoff over left guard. Went right over Tim Dykes and Mark Austin with Blazing game leading. Okay, here we look at it from the end zone shot. We get a good rest on that from that outside man. Now Clemson prides itself on bending but not breaking down here in this goal line situation. They've only had seven points average a game scored against. Them. Jim Carlin is 16th year as a head coach. He's won over 100 victories. A handoff is to Wright leaping for the score. That's one way to get in. Johnny Wright over the top. South Carolina's drawn first blood. The Gamecocks lead 6 nothing. Johnny Wright just takes off from about the two yard line and gets himself up and over. Not much uh, mystery about that play. He just got himself airborne and got. There we go. Here we get a chance to look at it. Gets a good lead block, jumps, and no linebacker up there to meet him in midair. Now they'll bring on uh, Mark Fleetwood, who has not missed a try for point all year. He's 25 for 25. That holds true for both these kickers today. Six nothing, Fleetwood, a sophomore of Atlanta. Here's the kick. Perfect through there. South Carolina has a seven for lead. Nine minutes to go in the first period from Columbia. It is now South Carolina seven and the Clemson Tigers nothing. We'll be right back. Danny Ford is only 33 years old. He's the youngest coach that's been coaching for three years in Division One. An all America All-Conference player for Bear Bryant in Alabama. Second down and 12. Here comes Jordan. Jordan looking. Jordan now is in trouble. Sacked at the 25. Great pressure was put on here by Mike Dura and Kerry Johnson out of the defense of South Carolina. Jordan throwing the 26. Well, Homer's trying to Homer Jordan's trying to hit uh, Tuttle downfield. Kerry Jordan put Kerry Johnson puts a heck of a move on him. 
and makes a play they're not giving him any room he's got to find a way to get that ball out there and he's better off throwing from that moving pocket but the defensive ends for South Carolina have really contained well so after the first down pass to Kevin Mack now Clemson's lost five yards as blue plays it's third down and 15 here's the pitch to Austin on the sweep cutting behind a block over the 30 gets a nifty game but way short of the first half of 33 Tony Walker makes a stop that time on uh, Cliff Austin along with Andy Province and it'll be a punting situation again for the Tigers. Well, the nation's number two team has been stopped so far by South Carolina. The Gamecocks lead 7 0 with seven minutes to go in the first period. Ends the punter, Dale Hatcher, averaging 43.4 his freshman year. Gets off a beauty. He's driving Troy Thomas deep. He takes it at the 17 yard line. Outstanding coverage down on the 22. A tremendous kick that time by freshman. Dale Hatcher from Sherrall, South Carolina, number five. Wow, did he boom that one into the wind? Well, we've got two of the we've got two of the best uh, punters in the NCAA. Ken, we've got uh, other action coming over the ESPN college basketball start. Your old school, North Carolina boy, are they high rank going against Kansas? I tell you, Dean's done a great job. Number one in the country, and then it'll be Pittsburgh out of the Eastern Eight taking on Alabama. Birmingham, coached by Gene Bartow, one of the surprises of that Sun Belt. All coming up Saturday, November 28th on ESPN Live. First down play for South Carolina. Gordon Beckham gives to Stelling. It comes uh, Ken Haygood on the sweep to the right side. This time he is pummeled all the way back near the line of scrimmage. All that charged up by William Perry again. A precocious uh, freshman from Aiken, South Carolina, 295 pounder. Uh, he's a surefire All American. Not only is he big, he's fast. Jim, <laughs> right, he certainly is. Jim Carlin is the sixth longest coach in longevity among the active coaches in, in Division I. Of course, Bear Bryant being the dean of that group, heading toward a great uh, wind of his career. Deep handoff to Haygood again. Flies the left side. At about the 28 yard line, Danny Triplett makes the play for Clemson. Dykes and Swallow. They may be running away from Jeff Davis a little bit here. Well, I'm sure they are. I haven't seen whether Johnny Wright's been hurt or not, but. Uh, He's not in the ball game and he wasn't in uh, in an early series of plays in the last drive although he came in on the goal line. He's had a history of injuries here. He played of course in the shadow of George Rogers for a couple of years. Missed one year during that time with an injury. Straight back in the pocket goes to court. Here's the pass. It is intended for Smith. Incomplete for 36. Perhaps should have caught that one. But it's an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down for South Carolina. <laughs> Beckham all got wiped out by one of his own teammates going over the punting team. And the punt is Chris Norman, who's averaging 43.8. Both these punters today are ranked in the nation's top 20. Good snap. Good rush. They block it. And it might go through. And it's going to be a Clemson touchdown. Alice Hall. A Clemson touchdown on the block putt. It is seven to six. And we're trying Alice to see who's blocked the punt. Jim Worst, was it? Jim Worst, Those number are 80. On the field. A tight end. It is seven to six. Oranges come on the field. And here's another look at it. Here we go. Here we see the block. Hollis Hall gets in there, knocks it into the end zone. Johnny, Johnny Rimbert recovered Johnny for the touchdown. A junior from Arcadia, Florida. Rimbert has the six points, and Clemson now is lining up with an open huddle. Officials are trying to get the oranges off the field. You know the significance of that. Clemson in line to accept the bid to the Orange Bowl as soon as this game is over. Now we're waiting for the driver point. Clips, of course, has the option to try to go for two, but they're setting up the kick or the holder way to the right. The other nine players are lined up to the left side. I don't understand this unless they're going to try for the two-pointer, kid. Seven to six to score South Carolina and the delay was to get the oranges off the playing field because uh, the Orange Bowl bed pending here for Clemson. 
That goal post is really not off center. That's just the angle of our camera. But Clemson waiting perhaps to tie it. Now they've got the center, the holder, and the kicker to the right side. The other eight players are lined up the left. That's a threat to go for two points. Now let's see if they try for the kick. Now they're going to shift now. Clemson just had it set up as a decoy. They may go back to that later for a fake. And to try for the point now for Clemson is Paul Bob Poiling. He's never missed. And this one is up, and it is no good. After 36 in a row, an all-time record for Clemson, Pauling misses. So, South Carolina holds the lead. Seven to six, back for the kickoff in a moment. South Carolina fought hard, but was no match for the Clemson defense. They punted after an incomplete pass on third down and 20 from midfield, and the first quarter ended with the score 7-6 Gamecocks. Then with 12 minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the half, Clemson's Bob Pauling kicked a successful 23-yard field goal, making the score 9-7 and putting the Tigers on top for the first time in the game. We're now late in the second quarter, and Hollis Hall of Clemson has just intercepted a pass by South Carolina's quarterback, Gordon Beckham. Clemson is now just inside the Gamecock 30, and it's first down and 10 with just over six minutes to play in the half. Looking downfield, Hollis Hall makes a great reception, and he takes off, and now the fun begins. Cutting back. Ken, I think he just runs out of gas right here. What? It might be Del Wilkes. I don't think he's that fast. <laughs> no. I, but he sure caught him, didn't he? He just, he just ran his maximum distance right there, and that was it. But it's a big play for Clemson. First and ten for the Tigers at the 29-yard line. First guy through. The fullback, Kevin Mack, plunges it over the 25. Maybe the 24-yard line. James C. Wright and J.D. Fuller, the two linebackers for the Gamecocks, make the stop. They spotted on the 24. It's a gain of about uh, four yards on the play, second down and six. They started this uh, series at the 28. That'll be second and six. Tuttle is to the right side. The record setting wide receiver for Clemson. Homer Jordan has the eye in the backfield. Austin, I tell Austin up the middle. Austin runs into about three game cots around the 23. And he's pounded back hard by Andrew Province, number 70. You see why that uh, Jim Carlin really is proud of him. There he saw him off the bottom of the stack. Hal Henderson also helped. But Province, the 260-pound junior, is the first guy to hit him. Well, he's a bona fide All-American candidate. 134 tackles already this year. Uh, the strongest man on their ball club and played consistently the whole year. Third and four for Clemson. At the 24, they run the option. Jordan on the pitch to Austin. He got the first down, I think. It's going to be close. He's down to the 18 yard line. Pat Boyne smacks down Cliff Austin right there. And let's see where it's put down. He had to get to the 18 yard line for the first down. Phil Ellis, a big block. Now they say the knee went down the 19. That being the case, it's going to be fourth down for Clemson and one. Now here's the decision to make fourth and one with a two point lead. You try to get the field goal or you try to pick it up. That's a tough decision at this point in the game. I'd really, if, if it were me, I'd go for the field goal. Well, you have the win at the back. You got a pretty good feeler. It's uh, Danny Ford's decision. Ford, who uh, was acting head coach going into the 1979 Sugar Bowl game after uh, Charlie Pell announced his resignation to go to Florida. And then they decided to make uh, Ford the head coach for the Sugar Bowl game. Game will all be, always be remembered by the run in between Woody Hayes and Charlie Bauman. But it was a great performance uh, by Steve Fuller and Clemson. That won that game. So Ford got off to a brilliant start in his career. <laughs> They're going to go for it. Yeah. They're going to go for it. I'm surprised. Well, they need one yard. Let's see. Uh, Phil Go gives them a five point lead, Ken. I guess uh, they have well, great I, confidence in their defense. If it doesn't work, there's the game cock. I don't know. It seems to is be. That, that. Is this after the fight or before? <laughs> it must have been <laughs> after the fight, right? <laughs> I think you're right. It's the only school in the country, by the way, is called the Fighting Gamecocks, South Carolina. There he is. Yeah, that had to be after the fight. Now he looks like he's gotten tamer over the years. <laughs> I remember him being a little bit more warlike. He caught one right in the old <laughs> snaz, didn't he? Well, this is a big move. Down. Yep, they're going to go for it. Jordan is out there. Paul Martin has come in. 
South Carolina's a goal line defense. 60,000 people rising to their feet. Big, big play. Clemson needs one yard. They got Mack at fullback, Austin at tailback, and they go to Austin sweeping right. He's got it. He's to the 15 yard line. Gee, what Out a of bounds on the 14. Fell out. Great call. Yeah, it was a great call. I don't know why anybody would have said you'd have kicked a field goal. <laughs> Not when you can pick up a first down. I hear you, Ken. Watch it again. Just good running by Chuck Austin here. Takes off. He knows what he's got to do. He's got to get a yard and a half. Lowers his head and picks it up. Well, that was great blocking, too, by the Clemson line. So Danny Ford feeling uh, he had the team to do it and the strength made the right decision as it turns out and it's first down for Clemson at the South Carolina 14 yard line. Fullback has it uh, driving his Mac over right guard goes right behind Lee Nanny. Mike Dura and Andrew Province. Boy when Clemson wants some short yardage they look for number 77 Lee Nanny the great All-American right tackle superior ball player from Spartanburg South Carolina. And uh, Mac, number 27, who's just a sophomore, didn't take him long to find out where he should run. Lee Nanny's got a little strength. He bench presses 515 pounds, which is the most on this ball club. This is where they've been weak, Jim. Uh, right down here inside the 20. Second and seven. Jordan looking. Jordan faking. Jordan to the 10. The five. Touchdown. Homer Jordan runs it in from 11 yards out, and Clemson adds to its lead. It's now 15 to 7. This is why Homer Jordan's going to break all the total offense records before he leaves Clemson University. He's got that ability to tuck the ball, turn it up. Here he is. He looks like he's going to run all, pass all the way. He decides to run, and Phil Ellis finally makes the tackle right here on the goal line, and he dives in. He's got enough momentum to take him on in. All right, there it is, uh, 15 to 7. If they go for the two pointer here, it could give them a 10 point lead. One pointer will only give them a nine point lead, so it might be a time to go for two. Don't They're ask coming me. Coming back Jim. out with Jordan, yep. <laughs> 10 point lead would mean that South Carolina would have to score. Well, they're going to have to score twice anyway, but it uh, puts a lot of heat on the comeback. A lot of difference between 10 and 9 points. I have the feeling that we're watching the beginning of a little bit of a tide here and I don't know whether they're going to need those two points but at, at this portion part in the game of course you're playing it as it comes and uh, Danny Ford I think he's going to go for those two. You mentioned Jordan uh, the fact he's going to break the total offense record set by Steve Fuller he's just a junior and he'll be coming back uh, next year he has uh, over thirty five hundred yards total offense already and he's already broken the. Uh, the total offense marks up by Fuller every year, freshman, sophomore, and junior. From Athens, Georgia. So the Bulldogs let one get away down there. Well, they sure let uh, they don't let many get away. away. They <laughs> don't let many. You're, you're right. But uh, he only needs 240 yards at the start of this ball game to break Fuller's uh, single season passing uh, record. And he's well on the way to that today. Going for two. Now, if you get the extra point, it counts too. Just one play. Look for Jordan to come rolling out. There's only one setback back here. Here comes Jordan looking. Jordan, Jordan fires end zone. Incomplete. Going to Gay Yard. Too high. So the score remains. Still an eight point lead by Clemson. It is 15 7. Favor of the Tigers with 4.39 to go in the first half. When we return, we'll head early into the second half, where the South Carolina Gamecocks are still trying to catch the Clemson Tigers. It'll be fourth down and two for South Carolina from the Clemson 36, and it's coming up right after this on ESPN Classic. Now South Carolina set to go. It is fourth and two from the 36-yard line of Clemson. Talk about big plays. This could be a big one here early in the third period. They run the option. Beckham's got the first down. Over the 30 and more to the 25. Gordon Beckham saw daylight, cut right behind Tim Dykes, and Billy Davis couldn't catch up until he got to the 25. This is a big play by Gordon Beckham. He makes a big cut right here. Gets back in behind that pursuit and picks up the... A uh, very, very big first down. For first the down at the Clemson 26 yard line. Dominic Blasigame was leading the blocking. Now Johnny Wright is back in there, tailback. 
Let's see if they go to the tailback right. They like to. Yep, here he comes. Sweeping to the weak side, and right is stacked up. About the 23. Jeff Davis again led that charge with Jeff Bryant and William Perry. Well, oh, that's a tough side to run against. Davis, All American for sure. Perry, they say, is a sure fire can't miss. 295 pound middle guard. And Jeff Bryant, the boogeyman, starting his 46th straight game here today. I'm surprised they keep running to Jeff Davis's side, quite frankly. They've got a uh, junior on the other side. Uh, although he's not built as much as Jeff Davis, he's a pretty good ball player in Danny Tripper. Now they send the tight end Chivers in motion to the right. Second down, about seven. The option, the pitch is back to Davis. Here's Hop Good. How Good is at the 15, the five, 10 yard line. Down on the eight. William Perry, a big 295 pounder. Oh boy, look at the Garnet cheering section now. There's a penalty down. Here's a run by Haygood. A good kick out block by the guard. And he keeps his feet good. He just really sticks his head in there. Well, it's going to go for naught. Hey, good made a brilliant run, all right. Uh, courageous run right into that uh, Clemson defense going against their tough side, which includes Davis, Bright. But it'll be erased on a penalty against South Carolina. Probably the most costly penalty the Gamecocks have received thus far. Holding. Sets it back to the 29 yard line. And now becomes second and 13. That's a tough break for them. That's a big, uh, it's a big play. And uh, this is a tough situation. Beckham still has three big downs left in this series. Second and 13. Beckham rolling. Here's Beckham going to the end zone to right. Touchdown. Oh, they're calling it incomplete. Wright could not hold it. He would have had six points for sure. That was a perfectly thrown ball by Beckham. Wright took it in stride. All he has to have is possession crossing the goal line. They say he didn't have it. We're watching the ball. Let's watch it come down. Let's see how long. Of course, the slow motion camera will show him having it longer. He has it at this point. No, he did not have it. He never had possession yeah, of the ball. Good call. Early in that play, Gordon Beckham had Johnny Wright open quickly. If he'd have hit him then, Johnny Wright could have run in probably. Here we have the penalty. Penalty is against Clemson. Offsets the last penalty we had. South Carolina took face mask against Clemson. Moves the ball inside the 15 yard line. It'll be first and 10 South Carolina at the Clemson 14 and a half. Here are the Gamecocks matching their early game drive in the opening minutes of the third period. We have 11 minutes and 13 seconds to go. South Carolina has not given up the football since the second half kickoff. They've controlled it now for almost four minutes. And it's first down to Clemson 14. I talk about uh, excitement and drama building. Here it is with South Carolina bidding to cut the margin down. Pitches back to Haygood. Left side sweep and driven out of bounds and South Carolina continues to challenge the strong side of the Clemson defense. In a play of four to the ten. Second down and six for South Carolina. They can score first down without a touchdown. They could tie the score with a touchdown and a two point conversion. It is 15 to 8 favor of Clemson. Motion goes Chivers the tight end. That gives them strong side to the right. Now they go to the right. Keep by Gordon and he's knocked down the 10. Ooh, was he smacked down by Jeff Davis. Jeff Davis number 45. Now there's what we're talking about, Ken. You see his pursuit. That time they went away from him. And look how quickly he got to the hole. Well, of course, you know, you want your you want your best ball player. Uh, to be a strong side linebacker really because you know most of the teams are going to run toward the strong side. They try to keep Jeff Davis on the strong side as much as possible. He keeps moving around. He's a great football player. Beckham on third down. Beckham fires. Complete for touchdown. Caught by Smith. Horace Smith. And South Carolina is within two points of tying the score with 10 28 to go in the third quarter. That's a big play. That's the same play they've been running all afternoon with Horace Smith coming back underneath. 
They're running that back out of the backfield. He's shading the defensive back as much as possible within the rules or without the rules, of course. And then they're bringing Harris Smith on a delay pattern back on the move. Third touchdown catch of the year by Smith. Watson again crossing from your right. Here we go. Blasting game goes out. He brings him back in. Smith comes underneath. They haven't stopped it yet. 15 13. You know the game cost you to go for two here. Try and tie the score. And you reflect back now that Clemson's trying for two points when they took the 15 to 7 lead. Well, I'm surprised actually that they're going for two points at this at this time. You know, it really doesn't make any difference. It's irrelevant because a field goal can win it. Well, a two pointer would tie it though. So they can get even here. Beckham has two wide receivers to the right. Now he's going to have three over there. Here's Beckham. Beckham hit from behind and taken down. So the tip fails. Weiss Clemson really set someone charging. I think it was Jeff Suttle. Let's see who gets him. Look, he's 23. Yep. Jeff Suttle. Boy, he, he tees off on him. You know, it really didn't hurt him. They went for the two points, Jim. You're right. You know, they can still come back. A field goal will put them ahead. That's the story here. We'll be coming back for the kickoff in a moment. But South Carolina's climbed back in this game. Clemson 15, South Carolina 13. It's now third down and seven from the 48 for Clemson, and the score is unchanged as we return to this exciting 1981 matchup between the Clemson Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks on ESPN Classic. Third down and seven, and Clemson now must come up with a big play here or give up the football, and they're leading by only two points. Here's Jordan. Jordan looking for Gayard. He's got him. Gayard at the 35 yard line for a first down, taken down hard. But another clutch catch by Gayard, stopped by Thomas and Perlow. He puts Gayard and, uh, and Perry Tuttle on the same side. He gets uh, Gayard to curl in, and I tell you, he puts it right on the money. These two guys between them have 191, over 191 receptions by this time. Now look at this throw. Throws back, makes a reception, and by Perlow. And Troy Thomas are all over top of him, but a little too late. First down for Clemson at the South Carolina 36. Tigers now on the prowl, leading by just two points. Up the middle, Bruce McSwain over the 30 and spun down the 28 by Troy Thomas. A substantial gain again by Chuck McSwain running out of tailback. Clemson now mixing its plays beautifully, Ken. We've got a ball game. Both of these clubs are opening it up. They're going right after each other, and Chuck McSwain and Cliff Austin are running. McSwain has tremendous burst of speed as soon as he clears that line. And he, every time he gets out there, he looks like he's going to break. Exactly midway in the third quarter. McSwain goes out. Seven and a half minutes to go in this third period. 15-13 favor of Clemson. What a game we have. Here's the pitch. Back to Austin. Sweeps the left side. Gets it just inside the 25-yard line. Hit down by Frank Wright. Freshman Ryle, right tackle for South Carolina. No third down play coming, or was that a first down? No, nope, that was first down. He got enough yardage. First and 10, Clemson at the 23. You know, Jim, I'm glad I'm out of football. When I see the guys that size running like that and bringing guys down from behind, I don't know. I was dumb to play. They get bigger and quicker now, Ken. It hasn't been that long since you played. First down play by Jordan to Austin. Austin picking his way gingerly over the 20. Got a little bit of a hole. The Clemson line now, I think, are controlling the line of scrimmage. And that's a big point. Well, I tell you, you know, they, I'm surprised they can hear down on the field because when they build a little bit of excitement here, uh, I'm surprised they can they can hear the snap signals. Now the seating capacity here is like 54,406. They're probably over 60,000 jammed in here. It is second down and seven. They go back to the other side of McSwain. He is caught and thrown for a loss. McSwain hit by J.D. Fuller, the left side linebacker. J.D. Fuller. J.D. Fuller's only a sophomore. And here they're going back against it. They're going to the short side. He makes that cut in there. J.D. Fuller's all over top of him. Only a sophomore. See right on the other side's a freshman. They're very young, but they're playing very aggressive this afternoon. Fuller is a cousin of Calvin Hill. You remember him, Ken, I'm sure. I sure do. Timeout call by Clemson. 
and facing some big plays now. It's third down and eight here at the 21 yard line. If there's any weakness that Clemson has or has demonstrated over the past past six uh, games, it's the fact that they haven't been aggressive enough when they get inside the 20 yard line. They've had problems. When Clemson scored 82 points against Wake Forest this year, they did not have a single fourth down. And Ken, I uh, can't never, I uh, can never call a game when a team did not face fourth down at least once. That uh, that has to be a record. I'm sure, probably in the annals of college football, there has there have been similar games, but I have never in my life. Ah, uh, you can see it. Oh, those are the exit ramps at uh, William Rice Stadium, and they're jam packed. Every possible inch of space occupied and then on top of that is somebody else jammed in here for this traditional battle. Right now it's almost a toss up. 15 13 Clemson leading by two points. They've got third down and eight and there goes Clemson offside. That's going to cost them even more and unless they can pick up some yardage here that could be a decisive factor when we come to the field goal. That hurt. That's Lee Nanny their their great All-American uh, offensive tackle and uh, that's a big play you can't uh, you just can't make mistakes right there and you're a 20 yard line on in and now they've really got the pressure on the pass game's completely different at this point on the field. Well I'm sure that just might have passed the field goal possibility from Pauling to Igwe Buike. We'll wait and see though Clemson still got the third down here third and 13. Over the middle Hegwood. And it's incomplete. And a penalty flag thrown. They may have interference here. Could be on either team, so hold on. But the flag was thrown right at Frank Magwood's feet as the ball was bounced away from him. Here we see the throw. I couldn't see any interference. Oh, there it is. Yep. Now, well, maybe he had his hands all over him, Ken, when you get a better I, uh, look at it. I tell you, he must have had his hand on his back uh, because uh, putting the hand in the front was not interference so uh, let's take another look at it. I'd, I'd love to be able to see whether he had the hand on the back was there contact before the ball got there right, bottom of your screen I tell you it's uh, it's a little bit too uh, close for me to call but uh, it was called let's put it that way that's interference break for Clemson gives the Tigers first down at the 14 yard line of South Carolina uh, the penalty so far about evened up and off to McSwain, swinging wide and then upended as he goes inside the 10 yard line, cracked by Harry Skipper, a corner linebacker for South Carolina. Well, I tell you, <laughs> uh, Troy Thomas might have a headache before the day is over. He's coming up and hitting people all over the field for South Carolina, but McSwain's got amazing speed. Uh, you know, he's, he's not a small guy, 6'2, 190, but he can turn it on. Well, he's gained over 500 yards this year, average of 4.8. That's the impressive thing about him. Second and three. Here's McSwain again, left side, driving for the first down marker. Gets it close to the five, maybe inside. Hal Henderson was there to stop the play. It could be another Clemson first down. That stops the clock with 5:15 to go in the third period. Clemson sitting on a very nervous lead of just two points, 15-13. They've had all they've wanted and a little more here from their old rival South Carolina today, but then that's to be expected. That's been the history of this colorful, bitter series. I'm having a little trouble figuring out why they keep going back to that short side. Uh, down there on the goal line, it's too easy to string that play out. And uh... Quarterback sneak, first down. Homer Jordan dives it forward. He went right behind Brian Clark going toward Lee Nanny. And Clemson with a great surge off the ball. Gives him a yardage for a first down. The three, it'll be first and goal. Here we have Homer Jordan's versatility. He wants that first down. He puts his head in behind Brian Clark and he picks it up. Now, if they score right now, they're going to force and change this ball game completely because they're going to go up by, well, at least nine points or eight points. And we've got a whole new concept. Here's the gift to McSwain to the goal line. Did he break the goal line or not? He was straightened up right at the goal line by Ricky Haygood and could not get across. J.D. Fuller also came in for a hit. Well, that was close. I thought he I thought he'd gotten over there for a second, but uh, hard to tell from our angle, but he was right at the goal line. I'll watch it. Let's see what happens here. Oh, Chuck yeah. McSwain's got that burst of burst of speed, and he No, he did not get over. 
Right there's where I thought he might have, but he was right at the goal line. Second and goal from the one. Mack and McSwain. Back to McSwain. Dives. Touchdown. Clemson has marched to score. They've equal South Carolina's touchdown here in the third period with four minutes and seven seconds to go in the quarter. The Tigers have scored again, and it's 21-13 Clemson. Well, when you got a stud that gets you there, you might as well let it, give it to him and let it take it in. Gets up. He takes a pretty good lick here, and uh, that hurts a little bit. You get yourself airborne. You don't really have control over your body, but... Uh, now right, you can see the Clemson band uh, cheering. McSwain now, we have him with 67 yards on 10 carries, and he gets the touchdown. A try for the point is good by Pauling. And Clemson now takes a nine-point lead, and South Carolina would have to score twice to get back on top with four minutes to go in the third period. Clemson 22, South Carolina 13. South Carolina will receive, and they're sending Kent Haygood now back to the goal line. He's had a fine game here today. He's averaged 20.5 yards on 15 returns coming into this game, and he has played well in this one. Had one return of 54 yards. There's the Clemson Tiger. Does a push-up for each point after a Tiger score, so you can imagine against Wake Forest getting a little weary when they got up to 82. I tell you, it's a wonder he, he made it through that ball game. There's Haygood, number 32. Freshman from Easley, South Carolina, and he's backing up inside the end zone, and he's going to come out at the 10. Haygood fumbles, and let's see. I think South Carolina gets it around the 17-yard line. Ken Haygood was able to scramble and get his own fumble rec uh, recovered, but, boy, it was free for a moment here, Ken. Yeah, I tell you, those other backs should have been all over top of him, even grabbed him. He takes a pretty good lick here. They're just lucky as a devil that this ball doesn't get recovered by Clemson. This ball game's over if it does. Jeff McCall made the hit there and jarred the ball loose. And they're looking over at Haygood now to check to see uh, how he is. That was a pretty big lick. Clemson. Uh, you work on that all week, the coordination between the other backs and the receiver, hoping that he'll understand. Running backs are Todd Berry and Johnny Wright. Quarterback Gordon Beckham's going all the way for South Carolina. Brings Horace Smith in motion. There's a lot of misdirection and rolling as Beckham. He's going to run, and he has caught and spun down. Oh, another big play for the Clemson defense. That one was by Joe Glenn, the left end. And what a celebration he'll have here to tell his folks because his hometown is Columbia. And he's come back here to play the hated Gamecocks. I tell you, I can't think of a better homecoming, but that was a super play by Joe Glenn. He got out there, and he... He only had one hand on Gordon Beckham's jersey and he was strong enough to pull him back. Hey, good and right. Remain in the backfield now for Clemson. Smith comes off the left side. Beckham looks over Clemson. Defense, they're showing blitz. They got eight men up near the line of scrimmage. Linebackers jumping in and out, but they don't come. Beckham down the right sideline. It is broken up. Andy Hedden, it was intended for Hey, good. And Hedden was back there to break it up. What an athlete he is. Came to Clemson as a quarterback, was switched to a defensive back, and now he's playing defensive end. That's a big change. When you're wearing number 12 over, 12 over there, you're supposed to be able to throw the ball a little bit, and uh, here he is uh, fighting those big linemen all day. Well, he's a tremendous athlete. They call him the bandit, and he's been willing to play about any spot where he was needed for Clemson. Third and 11. Clemson defense now has asserted itself here against South Carolina after widening its lead to nine points. Beckham needs a big play. Good rush on Beckham. Over the middle, wide open Smith. Has it on the 35-yard line. Spun down by Anthony Rose, but it'll be a first down for the Gamecocks. The elusive Horace Smith. Over 20 catches this year and close to 400 yards in total yardage. Here's another example. Horace Smith does nothing fancy. This is a 15-yard turn in. Anthony Rose is off of him. He makes the catch and keeps him in the game. That's at the 36-yard line. That for Smith was his third catch for 15 yards today. Beckham going to the air now at about every play. Beckham alone with Eddie to Smith. Intercepted by Clemson at the 45-yard line. Tim Childers, a strong safety. It went off the fingertips 
of the intended receiver Smith as you saw and Childers just pulled in interception number 23 for Clemson for the year. They're only two short of their all time record. That was uh, not Horace Smith's fault. That ball was high. He made a good effort at it. It always happens. You get it up there high. The guy jumps for it. It's a tip drill. That that's was all a, it is. That was a great play that uh, Childers made. Too. He made a super play and that's what the, the coaches work on every day in practice the tip drill. First and 10 Clemson at the 45 yard line. Another turnover for the Tigers. Pitch it back to Austin, sweeping left side. They're still going toward the short side of the field. Mike Durham made the stop. I think the South Carolina defense is uh, favoring the wide side of the field, Ken. And I think Clemson's running away from that. Well, they're they're trying to set their defense to stop that strong side play, and Clemson's coming back into it. The only problem with running into the short side is if you got a good defensive end out there, it's so easy to, to stop that whole side up. Well, Al, Al Henderson's done a good job for South Carolina. Game there, there was five, however, and it's second out and five for Clemson. Deep handoff again on the sprint draw to McSwain. Gets away from the first man, and he may have a first down. Inside the 45 yard line of South Carolina goes Chuck McSwain, stopped by Troy Thomas. But the tackle came, I think, too late for the first down. It'll be first and 10 Clemson. It is at the 44. That was a big league move by uh, Chuck McSwain. He spun around and got himself out of that uh, out of that little hole he was in and picked up the first down. He was the Atlantic Coast Conference Rookie of the Year as a freshman in 1979. And led the rushing last year for Clemson. McSwain, and he'll be back next year. Here he is again. McSwain down the sidelines, and Clemson continues to work that short side of the field with their sweeps and they're moving downfield. Fuller and Thomas teaming for South Carolina. Now this is where you pull the knockout punch on, on South Carolina. The Clemson's got a great ball club. They got a big ball club. They've got a lot of people. Now's the time. Let's eat the clock up, run the ball down the field. Let's keep after the same people on defense. Let's make them tired. One minute, 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. Clemson 22, South Carolina 13. McSway looking for Hope. Fumbles the ball, and let's see who's going to come up with this one. South Carolina. It's turned over on the fumble by McSway. The Gamecocks have it around their own 35 yard line. Mike Dura. Boy, what a game he's played. A sophomore from Calpin, South Carolina. And he's there with the football. Watch it. Chuck, Chuck McSwain's had problem holding on to the football all afternoon. Here he just pulls it out and Mike Durr is on the spot makes a recovery that ball was pulled out of his hands you can't hold it loosely not with a group of people that want that football offsetting turnovers touched at the interception South Carolina comes right back to the fumble a few plays later and it's the game Cox ball first to 10 on their 35. Johnny Wright back at tailback here's the option and Gordon is taken down by Glenn Joe Glenn getting to Gordon Beckham. Cracks him down for a loss at the 33. Now Beckham had no chance on that play. Uh, Joe Glenn made a made a super move out of there and just wrapped him up before he had a chance to pitch the ball. They got the they got that safety up on the pitch man very quick. He really didn't have any options. There's the timer play is one minute and five seconds. We're in the third quarter. There's the score. Nine point lead by Clemson. These two teams have been among the national leaders in turnovers all year, and yet the Ball's been coughed up about four times here in this game today. Pitch back. Here comes Wright. Got some room. 40. 45. Johnny Wright. Hit from behind. Out of bounds. Bear Billy Davis making the stop. Another brilliant run by Johnny Wright, a senior veteran from Fort Myers, Florida. And he has a first down for South Carolina inside territory of the Tigers. And Dominique Blassingame makes this play work. He kicks out right there. Beautiful block. Johnny Wright's a super back, so he can do it on his own after that point. I don't know how you can keep Johnny Wright out of the ballgame as much as he's been out of the ballgame today. And the Gamecocks could score a touchdown. We'll get right back in it. They're trailing by nine points with 45 seconds remaining in the third period. Maybe time for a couple more plays. Comes to Chivers in motion. They pitch it back uh, this time to tailback. Hey, good. Hey, good gets another pretty good game. Close to the 40 yard line of Clemson. That's Jeff Davis making the stop again, number 45, and big 66, William Perry. I guess when you feel like you've got another back as good as uh, Hey, good, 
That, that, that's how you can keep Johnny Wright out of there. I, although John, Ken Haygood is only a freshman, and I'd have to go with Johnny Wright in a big game like this. This will probably be the last play of the third period. We have uh, 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Number 32, you see, is Haygood. He's the tailback. Fullback is blasting game. Shivers again in motion. And they give it to Haygood, looking for daylight, taken down and short of the 35, but it's first down for South Carolina. Jeff Davis on the tackle, and that will end the third period. With two seconds on the clock right now, and now with the ball set down for play, that stops the starts the clock right there. One second, and that's it. The third period is over. This one is still far from being decided. It is Clemson 22. South Carolina 13 and the fourth quarter to come. Gamecocks are not out of it yet. We're going to the fourth quarter and South Carolina the underdog leading a trailing by just nine points 22 13 Clemson Tigers undefeated. They've never won 11 games in one year 1948 they were 11 and 0. But that 11th victory came actually in the calendar year 49 on January 1st in a bowl game. Gordon Beckton directing the attack. Hands off to Johnny Williams. Williams cracks the middle. Not much there. Taken back hard by the middle of that Clemson defense. 82 is Danny Triplett. He plays the opposite side from Jeff Davis, a linebacker. Ray Brown is 72. 94, William Devane. The gain is three at second and seven. South Carolina to Clemson, 33. Hey, good and Barry now, the running backs for the Gamecocks. See uh, Dominic Blasey game number 35 come off. He and Wright will get a rest here. Haygood and Barry go in. Now they run the keep by Beckham and he's hit down around the 30 yard line by a pair of Bryant, Jeff Bryant, number 99. They call Bryant and Perry the new upside down team, 66 and 99. Used to be Bryant. And uh, Stuckey, who wore 66, Jim Stuckey, all American. Jim Carlin did a good job getting his team ready here, Ken, for this. Well, one. he's done a great job, and uh, that's on oh, that play right there. Gordon Beckham saw uh, Jeff Davis getting ready to blitz, and he said, "I'm going to keep the ball and get out of here." Smith, the wide receiver, the right side, look out for a pass here on third down and five for South Carolina. Beckham, a good rush on Beckham, out of the pocket, over the middle. It's complete to Smith at the 20. Penalty markers down as Smith catches the ball, taken down the 20-yard line. If the play goes, it'll be a first down for South Carolina, but penalty flag is on the turf. They got a holding. Well, you saw Gordon Beckham scrambling back there, though a quick rush was put on immediately by Clemson. It looked like Andy Hedden might have been coming from right in. Maybe Jeff uh, Bryant was also in there. Got the pass off. Boy, Smith will get open. You give him three three seconds, and he's going to get open. He's uh, he's running that play up under there. And you know, when I when a guy has a holding call for on him at that point in the game, you'd like to say, well, listen, why am I running so hard to stay out of the way if you're holding? Costly penalty against South Carolina. Instead of a first down, the 20 Gamecocks are back at the 41. It's a 21-yard swing, and it'll be third down, long yardage. They have to pick up 15 here. Might go for a long field goal if they can pick up a, some yardage, but not get the first down. Beckham. Good rush. And here's Beckham for his life. Sacked over the 50-yard line. Gray Brown, the left tackle, sophomore from Rome, Georgia. All over Beckham, and he sacks him at the 48-yard line. And now South Carolina must punt. Well, I tell you, the, the Clemson linemen just keep coming. They're different names on every play. Here's Ray Brown. I don't think we've called his name today. And he puts on the rush. There's Gordon Beckham trying to get out of the way, and here he comes. No way. No way. They've only got two seniors in the top ten on their first two teams. Ray, Ray Nod, Fernando Brown. And he really put the sack on Beckham. And is Norman out to punt the ball. Back is Billy Davis. And they're going to let it go, and it's over their goal line. Oh, well, luckily for Clemson, the ball got in the end zone for the touchback. And so Clemson will take over at their 20 with a 22 to 13 lead. All right, Andrew Province has had to come out of the game. Boy, he's played a stout game for the Gamecocks. Now he's walking under his own power. So 
He just turned his ankle maybe a little bit and they look him over. Now back for Clemson. Pitch to McSway. Turns on the speed and spins over the 30 for a first down. Paul Martin, a sophomore who just replaced Province on that play, gets into the action and gets his baptismal. Makes a tackle. Young player from South, from Miami. First down for Clemson on the 32. Andrew's been the story for South Carolina this year. They were riding high and beaten. They were the first team to defeat the University of North Carolina, knocked him out of the top 10. They were hit with a rash of injuries. And it's continued a little bit here today. On first down, first guy through is the fullback. Jeff McCall, I think. Here, let's see. It's Brendan, Brendan, Crite. Brendan Crite. Frank Wright was there to make the stop for South Carolina. It was Brendan Kreit who's been uh, forced into fullback duty today a little bit, uh, Ken. Jeff McCall, I guess, just didn't uh, come back from that injury he had. He has not played today. Well, he had the rib injury he got in the North Carolina game. He's never been able to come back from. They've just lost Lee Nanny. They're great offensive tackle, and that could hurt that offensive line. Oh, that's a tough break. Lanny, uh, Nanny just limped off, and they'll have to replace him with Joe Ellis. There's a McSwain exploding through. McSwain over the 45. Robert Perlow and a penalty flag is thrown here on this play. Oh, maybe it could have been a late hit or on that one. Any event, South Carolina. Watch McSwain. Chuck McSwain can make his own hole at times. Here he is. He cuts. He makes that cut. And you're going to see a flag. There you go. 84. Kerry Johnson coming in late. That it's going to cost him 15 more. You can't do it. You know, watching McSwain just have dawned on me, Ken. I imagine a lot of folks out in Nebraska looking on here with some keen interest. I would imagine you're right. They'll be playing this team down in Miami, and they've got a great tailback. Roger the Dodger Craig saw him play uh, when he came up as a freshman. Now, 100 yards for McSwain. He's gone over 100 yards today in 15 carries, unofficially. Great performance by the junior from Caroline, North Carolina. Here goes McSwain again, cutting back and just throwing his body down the 31-yard line. Ricky Hager. Boy, he plays with abandon. He does that. He, he leaves his feet a lot, uh, which would worry me a little bit as a coach. And here we, I think that's Emmanuel Weaver, who was a great nose guard for the South Carolina Ball Club early in the year. Another he got hurt. Yeah, another flag is thrown. There you, that's Weaver on crutches. He was a great nose guard, and that's uh, typical of what's happened to South Carolina. Personal foul, South Carolina. Second one here on this drive. It'll be another first down for Clemson. That's on Phil Ellis. Well, Ellis had to come in, you remember, and replace uh, a player a moment ago. He came in for Andrew Province, I believe. Yep. He had been playing defensive end behind Henderson. Oh, those things will kill you. That's 30 yards in this one drive. All the way down the 16-yard line, and uh, Jim Carlin a little upset over the way things have turned here. His, his team was very much in the ball game. They still are. But with 10 minutes and 44 seconds to go, Clemson now threatening here to pick up some insurance at the South Carolina 16. Homer Jordan sticking to the ground now. Hands up the middle to Kreit. First guy through, stopped by Ricky Haygood. I'll say this about the Clemson Ball Club. They're not afraid to use their, all of their backs. Well, they've used five running backs today, plus Jordan, who saw a running back of his own right. Well, he's like having a, he's like having a fourth one in there. You're right. Nick Swain now is the tailback. Hey, give it to McSwain. Cuts back, 10, 5, 4-yard line. Chuck McSwain almost broke it for the score. Robert Perlow tripped him up, but he gets a first and goal for Clemson. And the Tigers now really controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, he's got an interesting running style. If you notice how he runs, he's kind of shifting a little bit, but he seems to glide. Here, he, you see that little fly? He just kind of glides out of the way. Well, that was not going to count. Uh, Clemson's been caught for holding, and so it'll come back the other way. And now penalties beginning to uh, break up the momentum of this game with just under nine minutes to go. There's the signal from referee Raymond Bauer. Holding against Clemson. Danny Ford right down on his knee watching this one. Boy, he'll be taking this team into a postseason bowl game and this time perhaps with a shot at a national title. And he's only 33 years old. The motion comes Tuttle, a brilliant receiver. Jordan, a deep handoff, and here goes Austin. 
Breaking to the 10. All still on his feet. Now that's his uh, McSwain. That's touchdown. A great run. Great run. Chuck McSwain it was, and he goes all the way to score. 23 yards, and Clemson now has picked up some insurance with nine and a half minutes remaining. This is one of the finest runs you'll see this year. Jim, he just made it all on his own. He got through there on that little sprint draw, took off to the outside, kept kind of that little shifty motion of his. When he saw that goal line, though, he put it on it. Here we go. He lets the quarterback bring it back to him. He makes those little stutter steps, comes back. Now, watch him keep coming back out to the outside. Two tackles missed there. He breaks this one and stays on his feet long enough to hit that goal line. Uh, that's just a great run by McSwain. I'd say he's now a candidate for a Vitalis Player of the Game Award. I would say he's very close right now. Again, Clemson used that unusual. That's 129 yards for Chuck. 131. 131 yards by Chuck McSwain. Oh, what a day he's having. Clemson. McSwain uh, catching his breath. He remains out there for the try for point. It's 28 13. And Clemson with that unusual open huddle, and now they ship their men back into a normal setup. Bob Pauling to try for the point. Pauling had his string broken today, but now he's hit his last two. And it becomes a 16 point lead for Clemson. Nine and a half minutes to go from South Carolina. Tigers 29, Gamecocks 13. A Tiger rag, the strains of that we've heard a few times today, and they strike up the band one more time. The Tiger just finished his 29 push-ups, Clemson 29, and uh, South Carolina 13. I think the Tigers got to pull muscle, but one thing you got to worry about is tripping on these oranges coming out on the field. I can see a few right there. Significant, of course, because of the Orange Bowl bid that'll be tendered Clemson at the end of this game today. And they'll be headed for Miami to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers on New Year's Day in Miami. Should be a good game. Igway Bikway really boomed that one. Eight yards deep in the end zone. That'll be touchdown right there by Kent Haygood. And discretion being the better part of valor there. South Carolina will take it out to the 20 and begin from that point. Gordon Beckham who's had a pretty good game. Not so much in passing but mixed up the attack well. He's had two impressive scoring drives to start each half. The beginning of the game and again the third quarter. Each wound up in a South Carolina touchdown. And now here he goes from his 20 with his team now trailing by 16 points. Nine and a half minutes to go, and Beckham may be forced to go back to the air. From the 10, Beckham out of the backfield, and he's hit his man there, and that is Dominic Blasingame, the fullback. Gets a gain of about four or five yards out of it, stopped by Tim Childers, the strong safety at the 24, and be second and six. Well, he's going to have to get a little bit more than that. Uh, he's got plenty of time, nine, nine minutes, a little bit over nine minutes to go. He's got to start putting the ball downfield. You know, passing has come more and more to college football. Uh, having the biggest year ever, college teams are in passing, and here's Beckham again. Down and out, intended for Chris Corley, the tight end. It'll be third and six now. That stops the clock with 8.56 remaining in the fourth period. Shadows now have uh, completely covered the field here at Bryce Williams Stadium in Columbia. Horace Smith uh, comes up limping a little bit, may have pulled a muscle, and he goes out. Keith Miller goes in to replace him in a wide receiver spot. Smith's the top receiver and has to, and he's caught three passes in this game. There's Beckham's log, only seven completions at 20 attempts, 74 yards, two other men intercepted. Blitz all out on Beckham. He gets by the first wave, and now he'll be taken down and sacked inside the 15 by Bill Smith. Another sack by Clemson. Bill Smith, number 84, a nope. senior from Duncan, South Carolina. He had no chance. Number they came up and faked it on the outside, and then they brought it up through the middle. You know, Ken, uh, Clemson hadn't scored a touchdown on a block punt in 17 years, and Smith blocked one this year against Virginia, and Clemson come back to get another one here today. 
Norman in the punt will have to punt from inside his five yard line. Good protection this time. And a nice high kick. Back to pack take by Billy Davis on his 45. Davis the 50. Needed one more block and he's tripped up just he goes over the midfield stripe. He's down to the South Carolina 47. And there it'll be first and 10 for the Tigers. Eight minutes to go in the game. Homer Jordan now with some uh, breathing room has a 13 point lead. The pitch is out to McSwain. Here he comes. McSwain, 45 40, and out of bounds. About the 40 yard line. He's going to get eight more yards on that one. J.D. Fuller stopping. He looks like he's not running, but uh, those legs are moving. Very deceptive. Why well, McSwain's having quite a day here for Clemson University. We mentioned that he's going to be a candidate at least for a player of the game. And I think Clemson's going to ask for a timeout. The Tigers want to talk things over. Believe it or not, Jim, some of the fans are leaving. I would guess they are not Clemson fans if they are leaving. McSwain's biggest game uh, previously was 170 y 107 yards against Kentucky. So this is his biggest game of the season in rushing. For the Clemson Tigers. Second and two, Clemson at the 40 after that eight yard gain. There's a good look at Homer Jordan. He's had an outstanding game, too. Scored a touchdown today. They give it to McSwain. McSwain runs into a little problem here in the name of James Sumter and Hal Henderson. Now, in my opinion, Chuck McSwain is tired. They ought to get him out of there right now. He can only hurt you from this point and watch him break it for about 30. <laughs> but uh, he looks tired. He's running tired. I think you could look for a pass right here, even though it's third and short yardage. Well, now maybe they might go for the first down. But they just brought in Frank Magwood. He's an excellent receiver. But it would seem here Clemson will try to get the first down. Third and a yard, probably less than a yard, at the 43 and a half. Fumble by Jordan. South Carolina will get it. And it'll be the game Cox ball. It cannot advance a fumble. The defense cannot in college. And it's been turned over by Jordan at the 47. And I do believe he had passed in his mind, Kim. Well, I think he did. Honestly, I think he might have he might have been thinking about setting up a little bit. He just didn't make connections with the center. That could have if we'd have been playing on a different rule structure, that could have been a different ball game. Well, right? NFL would have been a six, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure would. He had been. a 15-yard lead. That was Phil Ellis, number 80, a junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, recovered the fumble for South Carolina. The game, Cox still have a chance with 7.14 to go. Back going down the left sideline to Smith, thrown behind him, incomplete. Horace Smith had made his cut, and Beckham was just off the mark. Rod McSwain covering. Beckham has been inconsistent, especially in passing for South Carolina this year. That and the losses they've had in the offensive line have really checked the game. Got looked like they were headed for a great year when they beat North Carolina, but they've hit the skid since then. Now you can understand why. Seven minutes and nine seconds remaining. Back on Ace being charged and sacked. Bill Smith. Nobody checks Smith as he's coming hard from left end. And Smith gets his second sack here in the fourth quarter. Uh, Cardinal sin. You can't let a guy get sacked at this point in the ball game. Bill Smith, really, he got a little watch out block from number 75, and from that point on, he teed off on him. Well, he ain't had Ricky Elliott beat. You're exactly right, Ken. And he takes Beckham down for a loss to the 39, and now it's third and 18. Really needs a big play here now. Beckham needs a lot going down the sidelines to Smith and it's way over his head out of bounds. Fourth down punting time for the Gamecocks. So here was six minutes 28 seconds to go in Columbia South Carolina the nation's number two team looking more and more like it's headed for a win number 11. This is Jim Thacker with Ken Willard and the traditional battle between the Gamecocks and the Tigers number 13 Chris Norman excellent punter for South Carolina. Averaging almost 44 yards a punt. He's way under that today. Just 32 8. Had one blocked for a touchdown. Bad snap. That time Clemson was not rushing. Oh, does he hit this one? 
way over the head they of Billy Davis, ball. and that's going to be killed inside the one. I want to tell you, that's one of the finest plays I've seen in a long time. No, now they're saying it was touchback. He did not get it in time, but oh. wow, was that close to being a sensation. He's going to get punch. overruled over here. I tell you, he's going to get overruled. Now, they are going to put Clemson in a hole. <laughs> right there. I, I Look think how it's a, close that is to the goal line. It's a good call. It really is. Let's watch this ball and see if we can we can tell whether the ball hits in. Now, Ken, it's the ball, not the player, That's right? That's exactly right. That's a pretty good hop there. Ball does never cross the goal line. Good call, Ken. You had it exactly right. John Tanner. John Tanner, number 19. Tony, Tony Rambo. Tony Rambo is the man who made the play. How many times do you see a ref, one ref overrule another ref on a, on a decision play like that? Well, not well, but they should. That's an excellent call, and uh, that's what they're there for, to well, be a it, team. It takes courage to do that. And, uh, they don't get enough credit for it. Rambo is a, only five foot eight. I don't know that Paul punt very well. Billy Davis didn't try to make a fair catch. That might have been the first mistake by Clemson. I think you're right. Uh, although at this point in the ball game, you don't want to make a mistake, and sometimes when you play not to lose, you can lose. That was a super punt. That was about a 70-yard punt. Clemson, quarterback uh, keep. And if they don't watch themselves, uh, South Carolina doesn't watch it. Uh, Homer Jordan will sneak his way on out to the 20-yard line. Yep. Number three, he's had another big game. Boy, he has been consistent and improved almost every play. I already see the South Carolina home school board calling for the defense, but there's the story of the game. Less than six minutes to go. Clemson, 16 point lead. McSwain, back in the backfield, and pitches to McSwain to the right side, cutting back. McSwain knives it over the five. They're trying to get at least some running room here for Dale Hatcher. J.D. Fuller stopping McSwain. McSwain having his biggest game of the season. That's a very brave play too. Uh, I'd get a little nervous as a coach when I watch those pitch outs going back here in the end zone when a guy's receiving the ball. And and quite truthfully, Chuck McSwain's had a great game, but he's had a slippery game. Now the ball's been bounced around. He had one fumble that was lost by Clemson. Uh, it's third and uh, five at the six yard line here's Jordan on the keep Jordan first down more 10 15 and a first down at the 19 yard line another big play by Homer Jordan if Ricky you, Hagel tripped him up but too late if you think he had any other thought on his mind other than running that football you're wrong because he had decided to run that ball long before anything else there was no question of a pass he was off well, he has broken all the records set by Steve Fuller in total offense each year. Has only the total one left uh, to shoot for, and he's just a junior, so he's got next year to work on that. Clemson really comes off the ball. They give it to the fullback, first man through. Brendan Kreitz up by Darrell and Henderson. Clock continues to roll now with four minutes and 30 seconds to go. Clemson 29, South Carolina 13. The Tigers can hold this. They'll have a perfect year. Number two rating at the least and headed for a roll, uh, Orange Bowl date with Nebraska. And that man who's been in football 15 years will be going to his 11th bowl game as a player or coach. Jordan on the key. Got some room. Does he ever? 35-40. Homer Jordan all the way the 46 yard line of Clemson. Oh, a great run. He can hurt you. He can hurt you in so many ways. Brad Fisher got out in front of him and threw a super block. Here he is. He takes it. No magic to this one. He's running all the way. Fisher gets in there and knocks a couple of people down and he's off. And he's so smooth when he gets out in the open. And he's he's not a he's not a weak guy. He's got some strength in those legs. Oh, he's a tough kid, all right. You come behind Steve Fuller and break those records. You know what Fuller's done with Kansas City and here at Clemson, he was just brilliant. Now they pitch it to McSwain coming to the left side. I think you're right, Ken. I think McSwain a little weary. Now that's his biggest day, of course, and uh, I don't think his. I would doubt very seriously whether he's run the ball this many times uh, at any other time. Uh, you know, he's had the ball 20 times now for 141 yards, and that's a big day's work, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Ball at the 48 yard line. Remember, we'll be naming the Vitalis player of the game shortly. There are three minutes and 10 seconds to go. Second down and seven. 
Clemson at its own 48. Here's the reverse. It's setting up for Tuttle. Getting a block, and Tuttle will slip and go down on the 45. Tuttle didn't challenge Kerry Johnson, and he went down and slipped. He is no dummy. Jordan tried to get over there and throw a block. Do you see that? George was trying to lead Tuttle on the end around. Just when I think I had the game figured out, Jim, uh, Danny Ford sends in a play like an end around when I'm thinking he should be running out the clock. So, uh, you know, that's how much I can figure out on this one. Well, they lost back to the original line of play now. It's third and 10. Wide left, gay yard. And over the right is Stockstill. Here comes Stockstill in motion. His brother is a quarterback at Florida State, you know. And they give it off the deep handoff to McSwain, going straight ahead, gets some five more. Stop by Frank right around midfield. But fourth down, Clemson will putt with the clock showing less than two minutes to go. It's rolling now at 210. And Clemson leading by 16 points. And now perhaps visions of Miami. The members of the Orange Bowl committee are here to extend the invitation. Telephone lines are being held open to Miami. And the bid will be extended in the Clemson locker room after the game. There's the time, under two minutes. That's the greatest unkept secret in America today is who's getting that Orange Bowl bid. Clemson's just going to stay back in the huddle until they run down the time and they'll take the five yard penalty. Delay of game. There it is with 138 remaining. So South Carolina would have to pull off a miracle now. They need to score twice, and uh, time is closing in on them. Dale Hatcher, nation's 17th ranked punter, 43.4, is in to punt for the Tigers. Just a freshman. Oh, he puts it in the ozone. Oh, that is really up there. Fair catch taken at the nine yard line. Great punt by Hatcher. South Carolina socked into a hole. It's Clemson 29, South Carolina 13, with just 90 seconds left. Back to the goal line is Beckham. Sideline to Smith, takes it in stride at the 21 for first down. Great toss. Yep, Beckham hit Smith, a perfectly executed play, crossing pattern, or down and out, I guess it was. That's Chuck McSwain. Yeah, he is our Vitalis player of the game. Chuck McSwain, the tailback, his biggest game of the year. He's a junior from Caroline, North Carolina. Same high school, Chase High School, that produced David Thompson. And he has come up with a brilliant game, 151 yards. Today, the league clips back on first down. Back them on the run. Hits out of the backfield to Blazing Game. A big fall back up the 35 for another first down. South Carolina moving. But all the time, the clock is running down. Now they've called timeout, stopping the clock. With a minute. No, they did not call timeout. Just to move the chain. Yep. Minute, now minute 15, clock is rolling. But uh, Clemson uh, giving up about double its uh, average here, however, today. They've given up 13 points. They have been number two in the country behind Southern Mississippi at 7.7. Seven. One minute to go as Beckham fires deep down the sidelines to Horace Smith. Over his shoulder, but he is out of bounds. He made the catch, but it will not count. Smith out of bounds, covered all the way down there by Jeff Suttle. Clemson has come within two of tying its all-time interception mark of 25, set in 1951, and they'll have the bowl game to try and catch that. Less than a minute to go now, 57 seconds. The oranges will come on the field uh, when this one ends. Beckham comes over the middle, incomplete. That one came almost uh, to being intercepted. Almost had a chance to catch that record. The one hit Chris Corley's tight end on a crossing pattern. Got one hand on it. 51 seconds to go. That took six seconds. So you've seen the nation's number two team here today, the Clemson Tigers. They've been in 10 bowl games, including a 1940 Cotton Bowl. They beat Boston College, the 1951 Orange Bowl. They defeated Miami. They went back to the Orange Bowl in 57 and lost to Colorado. They'll be going back to the Orange Bowl on January 1st. They also played in the Sugar Bowl in 1959, losing to LSU and Billy Cannon, 7 0. And they've been in four Gator Bowls, splitting even, including the one that was Danny Ford's head coaching debut. 
That was marked by the Woody Hayes incident with uh, Charlie Bam. By the way, Charlie Bam and Woody Hayes became pretty good friends. Is uh, that right? Right. Uh, Woody called Charlie on the phone and apologized to him. And quite well known uh, story down here in. Uh, well, you know, Woody Hayes uh, was a great coach for many years, and regardless of what anybody says, uh, he, he did a whole lot for football in that area and, and throughout the country. And it was a, it was. More than anything else, I think it was a shame that it had ended that way. Well, he was a giant in coaching, no question, at Ohio State. I'd be lucky ever to have another one. Third down and 10 for South Carolina with 51 seconds to go. Now, Clemson dropping 11 players back. I've never seen that before. Nobody rushing, and it's incomplete. They're trying to hit downfield to Ira Hillary. I don't Ken, know. I've never seen a play before. Know. Nobody rushed. I think they were having some fun. I honestly do because they absolutely have nothing to gain by dropping 11 players because they're not going to throw the ball in the middle. They dropped 11 players. I Beckham could have picked up a first down. I think was just running straight ahead. 45 <laughs> seconds to go. I think they were having a little fun. I honestly do. Clemson, there you see. You're going to see a celebration break out there in a moment. <laughs> Already beginning to stir over there among the coaches, <laughs> winding up a perfect season, the first one since 1948. A fumble, that'll be an incomplete pass. Beckham's hand was going forward. Looked like he tried to change his mind and hold on the ball and tough slipped break. out. That's a tough break. He, uh, he. Incomplete pass, though. It's fourth down, South Carolina with 39 seconds to go. The Gamecocks will go ahead and play football here and kick the ball away. They'll try no fourth down plays, even though looks like the final issue here has been decided. 1948, Clemson was 10 and 0, won the Gator Bowl to go 11 and 0. But this is the first time they will have won 11 in the same calendar year. Norman is in the punt for the game. No, that was a fourth down pass. I'm sorry. The ball does go over. And. Just going to be dropped on. I think Mike Gaskew is in there at quarterback. How would you like to be Mike Gaskew who they send in? Well, it's Peretti. Anthony Peretti actually has come in. And it's a smart move by Danny Ford. He has Jordan. Gaskew's a pretty good backup. He is going to risk any kind of injury to either one of those guys. He's asked freshman Anthony Peretti of Jacksonville come in here and do, uh, as uh, Terry Henry would say, two flop ons. There's yeah. the second one, and that'll do it. With it's nine a, seconds to go, and that's a countdown. Look for the oranges to come on the field now. The Clemson Tigers, number two in the country, undefeated, perfect season, 11 straight victories, and they touch it off with a sweet one indeed here today over their arch rival, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Danny Ford just been uh, congratulated, and he's heading now to the locker room. He'll be having a phone call waiting there from Miami. But that's the story of this game. Clemson, as expected, is the winner over South Carolina for its perfect year. Final, Tigers 29, Gamecocks 13. 